Hello Joe fans, welcome back. I've been wanting to do this review for quite some time. Well, actually since I started my channel. But, I wanted to take my time and give it the love it deserves. This is going to be my largest review yet. <laughs> yeah, about the size of an aircraft carrier. The flag? G.I. Joe's aircraft carrier? Yep. Wow. That's right, it's the colossal 1985 G.I. Joe USS Flag aircraft carrier. For those of you who have never seen this thing in person, I can't express just how huge this beautiful beast is. Now I was one of the lucky few that actually saw this in the store back in 1985. The box was as big as I was, and I not dare ask my parents to buy this thing for me, because at the time, my brother and I were sharing a room, and this thing's the size of a twin bed. We already had two twin beds in our room, this thing never would have fit. Can you imagine back in 1985 being on the Hasbro design team? Sitting around the table saying, Okay, G.I. Joe's on top of the mountain right now. What are we gonna do next? <laughs> so let's show them what G.I. Joe can do. I got it! Wow! Introducing the G.I. Joe USS Flag Aircraft Carrier. Imagine being on the deck of this aircraft carrier. The USS Flag is fantastic! It's so big! Come on, Matt! G.I. Joe USS Flag Aircraft Carrier comes with what you see here, other figures and equipment sold separately from Hasbro. Now the flag was named after General Flag from the comic book series and he's responsible for putting the Joe team together. Now you may have noticed that my flag actually has a little bit of an upgrade to it. I ended up building a mobile custom lower level for it because it is so big. A prize a quarter mile long and 20 stories high. Well, not quite that big. It is, however, a whopping three feet wide by seven and a half feet long. And a funny story for you, my brother recently visited from out of town, and the minute he saw it, he said, Impressive. Most impressive. So what would you categorize the flag as? A playset? A vehicle? Well, to me, it's an amazing environment to display all my Joe Air Force and nautical vehicles. A continuously changeable diorama. It's like lightning in a bottle. Something that was only created once, and probably never will be created again. Now before we go over my custom base, let's go over what the flag actually came with back in 1985. Starting with the deck, this is four very large pieces of durable plastic. And this is actually what gives the flag its size. Now when you put this thing together, there's no way to move it around. So unfortunately you have to disassemble it, move it to a new location, and reassemble it. And every time you do that, there's a fear of breaking something. Now the decks are actually held together with some clips. Now these clips right here go into a truss system underneath, and these are pretty fragile. And when the designers were building the flag, they actually made this surface nice and textured. That's a fantastic touch because when you're rolling your vehicles back and forth, it's not going to scratch anything up. Another feature that deck has is this raisable blast shield. And this pops up, locks into place, and that's to prevent any blast from hurting the Joes when the jets are taking off. Ready on flight deck! Next to the blast shield, there's a working deck elevator. Now, this deck elevator sits on a really narrow, fragile truss system, and I don't dare try to raise and lower it. I'm afraid I'm going to break it. I actually like it in the up position because it gives me more deck space to put things like the dragonfly and a couple of skyhawks. Now of course you can choose to put whatever you want over here, but I just think these three look great together. Next up, the flag comes with the Admiral's Launch. Now this is an oddly shaped little boat that actually raises and lowers. You really can't fit vintage or modern figures in here because it's just a little too small. But I think it's a really nice touch to add to the side of the flag. Next to the superstructure, there's a working crane. I'm on! They'll hoist us aboard! And you can raise and lower the hook by turning the knob. If you look back here, there's a removable engine cover, which is often lost. 
underneath the bow, there's two removable anchors. They are a little fiddly to get out. But as you can see, you can hang a string on these things to make them hang a little bit lower if you like. I personally like them in the up position in case the Admiral wants to drop anchor. Another really great feature is this arrestor hook that they added. Now this is specifically made for the 1983 Sky Striker. And basically, you take the hook and you slide it in here on the ridges of the Sky Striker like this. And there's an arrestor cable on the deck. So when the Sky Striker comes in for a landing, you drag the hook down, catches the cable, and stops the plane. Also included with the flag is a vehicle, which is used for towing and refueling the vehicles. Now this is uh, no stranger to easily lost parts. Unfortunately, the engine cover is the culprit here. This is usually missing. We'll take a look at the refueling trailer next. I'll spin this around so we can take a look at the back of it. It has two nozzles and two rubber hoses. And you basically pull these out so these have a nice length to them. And now the Joes can actually refuel their planes and chop us. If we remove the trailer, that actually exposes the tow hook. Now this white tow hook is specific to the 1983 Sky Striker. And basically, it hooks underneath the nose of the plane. You can pull it around and park it on the flight deck in any position. There's one more play feature that's included. This working speaker microphone. This actually clips onto the side of the superstructure. And it has four different sounds. And the last setting is a megaphone feature. Attention all hands, attention all hands. The flight deck inspection starts in 10 minutes. Now unfortunately my megaphone feature is a little tired, but I can only imagine as a kid this must have been a ton of fun. I bet parents were plenty annoyed with this thing because it is mobile and you can take it with you anywhere. And as you can see there's no shortage of room on the deck. The Sky Strike is a huge plane. The Thunderwing Jet looks great on the flag. Of course the Phantom Stealth Bomber. The Conquest Jet. The Tomahawk Helicopter. Heck, there's still room to land another Dragonfly if you like. Leader Joe to carry your flag. Carry your flag to Leader Joe. Permission to land. Landing pad clear, Leader Joe. The three-tiered superstructure has some internal and external displayable capabilities. And that's actually held to the deck with these two Y clips right here. And these prevent the superstructure from sliding around on the deck. There's also two operational doors, one at the bottom and one at the top that just swings open. There's also two balconies on the exterior, which is connected by a ladder. And if I pan the camera around to the front, you'll notice another small custom I added to my flag. I put in some windows. I put tinted windows on the top, and that's to keep the sun out of the Admiral's eyes and clear windows around the bridge. Now those are the features on the exterior. Let's take a look on the inside. Starting with the main bridge. First off, I added some self-adhesive LED lighting to the ceiling to bring some light in here. There's the easily lost purge valve. Behind that is the helm or steering wheel. The vast number of navigational computers at the Admiral's disposal. So there's a lot going on up here at the bridge. Behind the Admiral, there's a hole in the floor, which is a ladder. And if we go down the ladder, we end up down here in the communication room. And here you can see breakers taking care of all the communication systems of the flag. Holy yoke, Massachusetts! Breaker to all units, coming in! Next to that is the missile storage room. This is a narrow little room. And 
The flag comes with this oddly shaped missile rack, which quite frankly doesn't hold any missiles that come with the flag. I opted to put that aside and just put in a couple of gun racks back there so the Joes can hang their rifles on. I guess you could put a couple of lockers in there as well because those are pretty narrow. Next to that is another room and there's the doorway that leads out to the flight deck. And as you can see, Gung Ho's waiting for his turn to get out the door. There's a ladder that leads up to the second floor. And up here, I just placed a locker and a foot locker on the floor for the Joes to store some stuff in. And for the last room, in the center here, you can see the doorway that leads out to the balcony. And in this room is the Combat Center computer system. And mainframes operating that. There's plenty of room for a chair and another small computer or table if you have it. And plenty of room for a couple of more figures, like Psycho. Now here is the ladder that leads up to the mass. Let's play catch! And this is what gives the flag its height. And as you can see, there's quite a bit going on up here. On top of the mast, there's a cap. And that's actually what holds this whole thing together. And as we pan down, you'll see the really large net radar system on the back of the superstructure. And this actually rotates back and forth. That picks up any of those incoming snakes in the sky. And last, but certainly not least, is old glory blowing in the wind. The interior has such fantastic diorama options. And unfortunately, most flags are up against the wall, so you can't take advantage of this. This is another reason why I wanted to build that custom mobile base. Now I can pull it away from the wall and take full advantage of the inside. I bet you're wondering, does the flag have any defense systems? Does Popeye like spinach? The flag has three 76mm anti-ship guns. This one's located on the port bow, and as you can see, it's fully articulated. The second gun is located at the port quarter underneath the deck. And again, it's fully articulated. It goes up and down, back and forth. And the barrel does go in and out. And the last gun is located at the starboard quarter. Again, fully articulated, back and forth, up and down, and the cannon goes in and out. Missiles? Oh, we have missiles! Yeah, they're in for one heck of a shock! There's six of these missiles on top of the superstructure that are actually longer than the modern and vintage Joes. There are two satellite dishes as well. This one's located on the starboard bow, and these rotate back and forth and up and down. Now, according to the blueprints, these are called the missile control radar systems. Now, I really like this one because this actually has a stairwell leading down to it, so the Joes can come down here and do some maintenance. Now, looking at the stern of the ship, is one of the most expensive pieces to replace on the flag. For its size, of course. The fantail railing. Unfortunately, this thing looks like a sprue, so I can only imagine how many parents threw this thing away. Next to that is the second radar dish. And of course, this is articulated as well. Now, oddly enough, the space under here is so short, you can't even fit a Joe under here, modern or vintage. I guess maybe if you want to lay one down, that would work. Be a great place for shipwreck to crash. The last piece is the hull apron, a nice flexible piece of plastic that slips through the truss system and closes off the underside. Now, I opted not to use this because of my custom base. And this is a great segue to start talking about the custom base. So let's take a look at it. I got the idea of the custom base from the boys over at G.I. Joburg. A trio of really enthusiastic Joe collectors. If you haven't checked out their channel, you definitely should. The first thing I did for my custom base is I laid out a large piece of white paper, then I set up the flag on top of it, traced out the footprint of the flag, as well as the location of the bow, stern, and all the trusses. I then cut out the template, 
purchased a piece of three quarter inch finished plywood, laid my template on top and traced it out. With all the lines transferred to the plywood, I then cut out the shape of the template. Now I didn't want it to be so boxy, so I rounded off all the corners, shaped out the bow and the stern. Next I bought 1x6 clear pine for the walls, laid those out on top of where the trusses are going to sit. I then framed out walls for the bow and stern. And on top of the walls I purchased 1 quarter by inch and 3 quarter inch pieces. And this just allows the trusses to sit on something a little bit wider than the 3 quarter inch pine. Now before I secured any of these, I wanted to make sure I cut out all the location for my doors and window. And for my next step, I secured the top of the walls to the walls, and then those to the plywood, using finish nails and glue. I then picked out a color gray I liked, painted the whole thing up, I then tipped it over and installed six wheels, two in the front, two in the center, and two in the back. And this of course allows the flag to be now mobile and be able to move it around the room. Now with all that hard work out of the way, I started to construct my flag on top of my new base. Here's a little tip for you. Underneath those struts, bow, and stern, I actually used some of that anti-slip padding. You know the kind of stuff that goes underneath those area rugs in your house? What I did is cut tiny little strips the size of the struts, bow, and stern and laid it on top of the walls. Now with the weight of the flag on top, this thing's not going to slide off my custom base. I then installed the deck plates and superstructure. Let's see how it turned out. And here's the custom base all filled out. In this first hangar right here, I have a couple of amphibious vehicles. The APC is a really large vehicle and it fits under here no problem at all. There's the Night Rhino, which is a repaint of the Warthog. There's also a couple of mail away Manta surfboards. And I also installed some LED lighting under here. Now the undercarriage of the actual deck plates is textured. So I opted to go with the self-sticking LED light strips. It does get pretty dark down here, so you're definitely going to need some form of light source to light up all your figures and vehicles. Moving down the ship, you can actually see I installed a catwalk with a railing system. I opted to take advantage of as much space of the plywood as I could and not make the base too narrow. Alright, here's the crew quarters. I ended up getting the bunks and lockers, as well as the table and chairs, from Marauders Task Force. A great location to pick up accessories for your 118 scale figures. There's a free plug for you, Marauder John. Also, you'll notice the video games on the left wall. Believe it or not, these things actually do work. You gotta have classic video games like Space Invaders, Dig Dug, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and of course, you gotta have Pac-Man. One of the first arcade games I ever played when I was a kid. I also made these custom weight sets so the Joes could stay in shape. And in the back there on the training mat, Quick Kick and Snake Eyes are trying out their martial arts skills. And if you go through the doorway, this brings you to the Whale Hanger. One of my all time favorite G.I. Joe vehicles. Now the Whale can launch from the side of the flag, just like in the Sunbow animated series. And with this custom base, there's plenty of height down here for the whale. Next to the whale, there's a couple of sharks I have back here. Of course, you can put any other vehicle you want, but I chose to put the sharks here. Underneath the stern section, there's an area for vehicles. And right now, I put two devilfish ready for launch. And if I don't want the devilfish back there, there's plenty of room for a single shark to get ready for the mission and launch out the stern as well. Looking at the stern of the ship, here's a much better look at both those devilfish. Now, as we come around to the starboard side, you'll see this wall right here, and this actually supports the superstructure above it. Here I cut in a window, so you can see what's going on inside. And in this room is the motor pool. Not every vehicle on the flag has to be amphibious. And these vehicles in here are just the right size for the Tomahawk to carry on land for the next Joe mission. And it wouldn't be a motor pool without CoverGirl and Clutch working on some vehicles. Get on there! Oh. Ah. You okay, CoverGirl? 
as we look inside, there's the doorway back to the whale hangar. Plenty of room for the armadillo, the awe striker, the vent mark two, and the 25th anniversary vamp. And as I pan back out, you can see the LCV recon sled and the doorway to the crew quarters. And with that window in there, it actually allows some natural light to enter the room. And through the motor pool, there's a doorway that leads to the ready room. And here the Joes plan out the next mission. Right now they're looking at invading Cobra Island. And you'll see that 3D map on the floor, which I purchased through Marauder's Task Force. And Beachhead finally gets his chance to be in command. Now if I was in charge... But you aren't Beachhead. First comes Hawk, then Duke, then me, and finally you. Yeah, well maybe that'll change someday. Well you tell him Beachhead. The ready room is located underneath the deck elevator. It be it that this deck elevator is not that large, it didn't leave too big of a footprint. So what else do I do with this room? Well, make it the ready room. And you'll notice that the other doorway actually leads us right back out to the original hangar. And here we see the Joes loading up the night rhino, getting ready for that Cobra Island mission. One fun thing about these lights, and if you get the kind that change color, you can actually put the lower deck into all sorts of modes. Like, the red alert mode. And last but certainly not least, there was a figure included. Everett P. Colby. Admiral Keelhall. And according to his bio, he graduated Annapolis and Navy Flight School. Flew Phantom F-4s off the Intrepid in the late 60s. He also attended the Naval War College in Newport, Rhode Island, and the Armed Forces Staff College. Holder of the Navy Cross, DFC, and Air Medal. Keelhall is a respected military historian, a nationally rated chess player, and possibly the world's worst clarinet player. Below his bio, one of his commanders stated, Keelhall was always cool. He could set an F4 down on a carrier deck at night with half the instruments out and walk away whistling. You know what it's like to land on a carrier at night? Try jumping on a moving skateboard while blindfolded. Oddly enough, Keelhall never made an appearance in the Sunbow animated series. Instead, Admiral Ledger was in charge of the USS Flag. A gray-haired older gentleman with a really raspy voice. I've been at sea so long, whales ask me for directions. And in 2014, the Collector's Club released a modern version of Kill Hall. Slide him over, I would drop him in right next to him. I think he came out great. They held true to the color scheme. And with the bonus of more articulation, he looks fantastic on the bridge of the USS Flag. And unlike the original, you don't have to worry about losing that hard to find or replace silver pistol that Keel Hall came with. So this has been my look at the 1985 colossal G.I. Joe USS flag aircraft carrier. And you have to admit, those custom sailors I made from Marauders Task Force figures really look great on the flight deck too. So if you're taking the plunge of getting one, or if you're already sailing one in your collection, adding a custom lower level is indeed a helpful upgrade. My only advice is take your time and enjoy the build. I hope you liked the video, and of course thanks for watching. Always try to help a fellow collector out and share your knowledge. Yo Joe!
what you call your real big budget spectacular finish. 